Hello there and welcome. This is NRA Solid Waste Facility Operator Training Module on Processed Glass Aggregate. It's a special program that has come into um, prominence recently with the issues of contamination, certainly in the single source material, but also around all of New England. And this is a program that NRA has run for almost 30 years now. Very proud of the uh, effective reuse of the material and the savings that's been generated by our member towns uh, by reusing it and not disposing of it and having to pay disposal. We're going to have about a 30 to 45 minute uh, webinar today. And my name is Mike Durfor. I'm the executive director of the Northeast Resource Recovery Association. And this webinar is one of the many that we have put together for all manners of material handling, thanks to the uh, support of the United States Department of Agriculture grant. And you'll have an evaluation at the end of this um, webinar. We ask that you fill that out and send it back in. And once we receive that, you'll receive your certification. For those of you in New Hampshire, the DES, New Hampshire DES certification, uh, the evaluation sheet at the end will uh, take care of that requirement for you. Please pardon my voice if it's not quite as strong as usual. It's the start of uh, hay fever season or algae season, uh, today being the fourth day of May in 2018. You can see on the right here a handful of the final product of BGA glass, as we call it. Uh, and I can tell you, having um, walked up a mountain of it today over in New London, uh, that it won't cut your hand because I cut it uh, in my shoes and I was able to walk out just fine without getting cut. It's most properly used and recycled for roadway base and sidewalk base and under culverts, uh, walkways of all kinds, or anywhere you need backfill for retaining walls. We want to welcome all of you community educators and environmental ambassadors who are presenting this training, as I said, made possible by a grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and rural development with the following goals. We want to cross-train solid waste facility operators and school staff in rural communities of New Hampshire and Vermont. We want to take down that traditional wall that sometimes can grow up between towns and schools when they don't cooperate. We think recycling should be a, a process that everybody collaborates on. We want to expand participation in the education programs offered through these online learning courses. It would be really great to see more and more cooperation at the school level with the transfer station operators so that the school can appreciate the work that goes into running a transfer facility and the transfer station folks can explain to the kids how important it is uh, to do a better job of, than we do every day of recycling. Thanks to the USDA, the program training is free. The goal of the program is for the training participants to work together, as I just said, to creating a safer environment knowledgeable staff on the proper storage and handling of hazardous materials and working in conjunction on solid waste issues, the glass issue, of course, uh, being one of the most prominent. After you view the webinar, please complete the evaluation, as we said, to understand your knowledge and steps you want to take to assist your community with managing materials comprehensively. Submit the evaluation. You can download a certificate of completion for this webinar. You'll receive the evaluation link for the webinar via email from info at nrra.net. Please complete it, submit it, and you'll have access to your completed certificate. If you have any technical difficulties at all, and I'd be surprised, quite frankly, if there weren't some, given my, my track record with technology, please send an email to info at nra.net. About us, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with NRRA, it started in 1981. Four New Hampshire municipalities founded it and they then called it the New Hampshire Resource Recovery Association. To, its goals were to provide a clearinghouse for current up-to-date information and a source of technical and marketing assistance in the general areas of waste reduction and recycling. That was then amended in 1995 to include a clearinghouse for relevant information, a source of education in the field of solid waste management, and as a cooperative agent with the state, regional, and local government agencies as a market development service. And besides helping uh, cities and towns with their glass issues, NRA moves all kinds of materials for municipalities throughout New England, including fibers and plastics, glass certainly, electronics, tires, uh, freon removal. And we also consult with town members 
on their long-term um, MSW municipal solid waste contracts as well as their construction and, and demolition contracts. We have a great um, storehouse or warehouse of knowledge in terms of what the level playing field is these days in all of these commodities. So before you sign any contracts or uh, agree to sell any of your town material, give us a call. We can give you an idea whether it's a, a good price, a bad price, you're in the ballpark, or maybe you should uh, go out and get a few more options um, for moving your material. Our coverage area is all of New England and not New York. Um, so we stick with the three northernmost states, and then Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Primarily centered in New Hampshire with a great outreach in Vermont, where we started their e-waste program back in July of 2011. And some down in the lower part of Maine, where we work collaboratively with the Maine uh, Resource Recovery Association. Victor's a great team over there. One of our charges, as you saw, was education and outreach, and we're very proud of the work that the school club is doing, and that's why it's so important that the schools know what the transfer facilities are doing and vice versa. We offer a number of workshops and trainings in the school. Uh, in the workshop area on the left, healthy home and clean waters, waste equals global climate change. We're allowed to say that. Uh, back to the earth uh, in terms of composting. And then garbage gorillas, and we do a lot of analysis of the waste stream and what it is uh, costing folks and what could be saved by virtue of actually recycling material instead of just throwing it away. On the technical assistance side, uh, we do a real strong program now that we've, we've just incorporated after much training, and that's green cleaning and indoor air quality, IAQ evaluation and review. Indoor air quality can be everything from the tile composition in the floor to uh, what's in the rugs, especially if they're new rugs, they may give off a, or off gas an odor like a new car. That's not necessarily good and it's not necessarily has to be that way. Cleaning materials, toxic materials that are used in art classes, uh, in the shop classes, all of those have to be properly handled and stored uh, to prevent any um, health issues uh, from both students and staff. One of our favorite exercises is what we call a trash on the lawn day, a told, T-O-L-D, trash on the lawn day. And we take all the uh, waste from the previous day from all the waste baskets and dump it on a tarp and sort it. How much is sorted office paper, which sells for $250 a ton? How much is cardboard, which sells for $100 a ton? How much is mixed paper, which is right now costing everybody, but uh, typically would sell for $80 a ton? Are there any aluminum cans there? Are there any plastic bottles that can be sold for 20 cents a pound or aluminum cans for 75 cents a pound? When an aluminum can gets to be about 95 cents or a dollar a pound, it's about the same as a nickel a can. So just think about that till last, next time you, you're tossing an aluminum can out. And we do a star assessment, which gives a baseline for all schools for the first time through. And then we like to come back in a few years and see what kind of progress is being made on all their recycling uh, programs that they have in the school. Just as a technical note, for any of you that are, are seeing this um, slide um, marker on the right-hand side, it's just a control panel. And if I knew how to hide it from you, I would. But uh, for right now, I don't dare because it might mess up my slides. So just bear with that part over on the right-hand side of the slides if you see it. Again, more education and outreach. This was uh, when we were doing an uh, education outreach workshop on household hazardous waste. And Dean Robinson from the New Hampshire Department of Employment, Environmental Services was doing the presentation. Uh, Jackie Albanese from Antioch, New England was working as an intern for us on this project, did a fantastic job, moved on to uh, bigger and better things in the, in the world of recycling and in the environment. But we have one of these meetings every month at the office, uh, typically, uh, except when we're on the road. Uh, and we try and communicate, uh, first and foremost, the latest in the market movements. Uh, the new index for fibers came out today, and unfortunately, mixed paper is down another $5. So as of May 4th of 2018 at 3 p.m., your mixed paper guide was telling you that it was worth a charge of $5 a ton. Or if you were lucky, someone would pick it up um, and take it away at zero cost. Uh, most people aren't that lucky. That's just a guide. Cardboard was down $10 today, uh, down to $70, $75 in New England. And again, that's taken a significant drop from $175 it was uh, back a year ago. 
So the impact of China Sword, which is one of our other presentations I encourage you to watch, has certainly had a, a devastating effect on the fiber industries, as well as the plastics, which is, is the next one to come. Again, part of education outreach, we're coming right up um, on May 21st and 22nd. There'll be a two-day uh, full uh, set of workshops and speakers and exhibits in the exhibit hall. And uh, after the workshops are all over during the daytime, we actually have some fun with a, a new band that's coming uh, Monday night called Lunch at the Dump. And I have it on good authority. They're a great bunch of pickers. Uh, but besides having fun, you're going to get to learn everything from uh, battery, proper battery handling, um, composting, diver diversification characterization studies. Um, there'll be round tables of security cameras at facilities, um, stories written about dumps, uh, you name it, a complete cross-section of workshops, all uh, eligible for New Hampshire DES credit and also for continuing ed credit for uh, schools if they want to attend on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we have another lineup of, of great workshops, and then the school uh, conference comes in for that day. And they'll have uh, three uh, workshops themselves, or two workshops and a told. Uh, and then we'll be giving out awards for the school on Tuesday and, of course, awards on Monday for those folks that have worked so hard all year long to make the recycling industry a uh, safer environment, uh, certainly here in New England, and also to keep up on the on the latest developments internationally. Other uh, facility operator training modules, uh, I mentioned the uh, China National Sword. Um, there's the Operator Smackdown, which is a safety and public relations training for waste facility operators to deal with the public, explain to them how important it is to handle things properly. Things that go boom, meth labs and dangerous waste that was just on the on the radio this last week is being an issue. It's not easy being green. Current market trends in recycling, we're going to replace with the China sword. The uh, not easy being green was actually picked up on Cape Cod this last week in the paper. That was a, a phrase we stole from Kermit and they stole from us, which is good because that means everybody's talking about it. Uh, but those current market trends were as of 2016 and we've updated it with the new one. Vermont Act 148, um, material management practices. What do I need to know? That's a, a relatively new program in the state of Vermont. Uh, I was just attended a, a briefing on that uh, Thursday down in Massachusetts, and they were talking about the rollout that took place about 2000, and I think it was 15, 16, and how uh, much progress they've made so far and where they've seen some challenges in the rollout. Um, for, it's basically a universal uh, recycling ban. Uh, recognizing they have one landfill in the on the northern border of Vermont with Canada and the fellow from Vermont said he's, he's not sure if uh, Vermont regulates the landfill more than than Canada because it's so close to the border. Now the dirt on dirt municipal composting and of course today's uh, training process glass aggregate a certified waste derived product. You hear more about that. So we're going to talk about a certified waste-derived product. For those of you that may be in Massachusetts, Maine, or Vermont, um, that phrase is akin to your beneficial use determination. And what it means is that this product is a non-toxic product. It's certified for reuse. It's certified as a beneficial use um, to use it in this manner as opposed to just throw it away, certainly. Um, and it, it gives us some ability to be stored, perhaps a little longer than some other material may. It can be in New Hampshire stored outside with no worry because it's going to get rained on in final form as well as prior to uh, getting ground up. So as long as it's in process in New Hampshire, uh, it's in good shape. Back in the day, uh, you would see bunkers like this with green and clear and brown glass all separated out and extremely clean material uh, because in order for the glass companies to take it in this form and then turn it into new glass, it has to be kept really uh, contaminant free as opposed to the sub base, returning it to a silica form uh, would allow you to uh, have introduce as we have uh, ceramics as well as just clean glass. But it, back in the day, this is what was going on in terms of separation. Typically, these bunkers would be emptied out into a container, and that container would be taken down to Franklin, Mass., which is down on the Rhode Island border. Um, and you would possibly get paid 10 or $15 a ton. 
up until recent history when that market fell apart and the last uh, processor down there actually closed closed their doors. So that is no longer an option. Most folks had gone away from this, um, if you will, because there wasn't a market for the odd lot glass. It was just one color they were taking. Um, so they, the work effort involved, the hours involved in separation uh, just didn't make sense. So rather than separate everything out, when it became challenging and keeping contaminants out, such as ceramics, when that became cumbersome, um, and adding some other materials such as window glass, ceramics, and porcelain became an option. And the Canadian market at that time for green glass nearly dried up. Um, uh, Northeast Resource Recovery worked with New Hampshire DES to come up with a better idea. Affectionately became known as PGA, not the Golf Association, but nearly as exciting. PGA is called Processed Glass Aggregate. And in 1999, DS deemed that PGA is a certified waste dry product number 11. It's an aggregate approved for construction, for public use works, construction, and other constructed systems, including use of sub base material for roads, bedding material for pipes, and fill around retaining walls and foundations. Uh, it can be under roads, it can be under sidewalks, it can be under roundabouts. We uh, toured uh, New London, New Hampshire today, and saw all the uses that uh, the Richard Lee is using it for in New London. Um, the sidewalks look absolutely brand new after being in a couple of years. No cracks, no swales. Um, the uh, fact that this uh, glass, once crushed, will not retain water makes it a very frost-resistant material, much more so than bank-run gravel. You can set a pile of this out in January and get a freezing rain, and you, your pile will work just as well as it would be in July as opposed to turning into a block of ice if it was all uh, bank run gravel. So the program is in cooperation with New Hampshire the Beautiful because they've helped members uh, collect mixed glass in one bin or pile. They've helped with skid steers, with containers, um, with storage um, to make uh, New Hampshire's a litter free state. And all of this has helped the municipalities deal with this commodity. How do we use it? We collect it and store the glass material and then transport it to one of five NRA PGA host sites. So if you can imagine a hub and a spoke, each of the five sites has about, oh, between, I would say, eight to 10 and 15 towns bringing their glass to the hub site. Once we have 1,000 tons uh, accumulated on the site, we hire a crusher to turn the glass material into the usable aggregate. The NRA host sites use the crushed material, they sell it or they give it back to the NRA members. Uh, when they come to deliver one load of, of unprocessed material, they can return to their town with a full load of processed glass aggregate and not have to buy that in, in terms of bank run gravel. So life is good when there's a lot of glass. Um, as you can see here, relatively clean material. Uh, there's one little outlier there maybe. Um, we looked at a... Uh, pile of residue uh, this morning actually uh, over in New London and the pile probably amounted, amounted to between three and five tons of material if that and that was out of a crush of three loads of material which would be a thousand tons each so it was way below the allowable standard for contamination but even with that that was all screened out so the clean material that came out of that crush, um, all of it, or I would say 100% of it, or 99.9% .9 of it could be used in the applications we're talking about without any worry of any contamination whatsoever. It's basically crushed back up from the sand it was started in to create the glass in the first place back into a fine silica product. You see here another container system. The residents tip it in from the front side and then are accessed from the rear uh, to pull the container out when it's ready to go. You can also use bunkers for material. Uh, we just pile it and store it there and then load a truck, if you will, to take it over to the host site and then bring back a, a batch of fresh crushed glass to use. It's not just about glass jars and bottles. It's also in our program currently, and this may uh, get tweaked or adjusted as depending upon the usage that we have for it. But it's right now, it's okay to include any colored glass container 
porcelain, sinks, and toilets as long as the metal parts are removed. Any Pyrex, any ceramic plates, cups, drinking glasses, window panes as long as the frames are removed, mirrors, and tiles. So this is glass with some porcelain tiles that were thrown in that'll all be ground up and when it's all done it'll look just like sand. This is a before pile as it's being accumulated and we had a discussion today about accumulating too much on site. We typically grind it at about the thousand ton mark but it doesn't hit that thousand tons till the last load is dropped in there. It's just building it up gradually so you may have 20 tons the first day or you may have 200 tons the first month and a half. It'll take a while for that pile to get filled up, but about every six months uh, is typically what we've, we're generating currently, and that seems to fit into what we've got available for uses. If we had more uses, we could generate more material, and we'd be crushing a lot more often. This shows you the screen after the, the fact, after it's been crushed. You're going to see in a minute the other part. But if you look at this and think in your mind, it's just like a sand dune out of Lawrence of Arabia. That's how fine this material is. I actually climbed up on a top of a pile like this today, and it was so soft and, and uh, easy to walk on that that's how I got it in my shoes. And again, I didn't even get a scratch. And this is nothing but glass. Here you see the, the grinder itself that feeds that other part. And this is the new stuff coming on, which has got some dampness in it from snow probably in the pile. But once it dries, it'll look just like the stuff on, on either side here. This will all be crushed to a 3 8 minus, so this tile will become the same as the glass, same inert material, same non-toxic material. And here shows you a full markup uh, when there's a lot of material. Sometimes this rig on the right is not needed. Sometimes it is just to speed up the process to give it a second grade, if you will, second cut. But typically, all the grinding is done in this first unit uh, and then out this um, shredder, uh, this beltway, if you will, uh, onto the ground. I think this was set up automatically, just automatically transferred into this other pile, quite frankly. This is what it looks like. It looks like sand. This is a uh, small unit that one of the towns had bought. Uh, in listening to the discussion this morning, again, Richard had said the town of New London started with one like this, or maybe a little bit bigger, and it lasted a couple of years and then and basically fell apart because it just couldn't handle the volume of material that he was using uh, in the machine. So then they tried making one themselves, and that lasted for a little while. And finally, they said, you know what, it'd be a lot easier if we just had somebody come in and do it once a year or twice a year and we wouldn't have to worry about the maintenance on the machinery ourselves, and that's worked out real well for them. So the mixed glass is delivered, just to review, by member towns, and is weighed at each site before it's dumped in the pile. The members can deliver their glass in roll-off containers, dump body trailers, or local highway department dump trucks. Unacceptable material, and we do, a, and I really witnessed this firsthand again today, they were pulling out anything that wasn't approved, but there was very little of that. But any headlights, mercury-containing thermometers, incandescent fluorescent bulbs, auto shield glass, any plastic, aluminum, tin, anything that's not ceramic or sand silica is pretty much culled through to start with or it comes out in the last screening. Again, examples of things that are not okay. It does require education on the part of the public if you're going to have them directly input it into the uh, container. Uh, you remember how clean those other containers looked? This is all material that's been pulled out of a, um, a crush, if you will. The cost currently to send mixed glass to host communities in New Hampshire is $30 a ton. Resulting PGA is being used in local projects by both host sites and participating members. And there is potential we're exploring for septic system leach field sand, and that is being tested currently. The numbers are staggering, really. In 2017, NRA members in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts recycled over 10 million pounds of glass at $30 a ton tipping fee. That would be the equivalent of the total trash tonnage of seven towns the size of New Boston, New Hampshire, for example, that was not disposed of but ground for reuse. In terms of dollars, since October of 2009 through April of 17, 54,000 tons of processed glass aggregate was shipped to the host sites at $30 a ton cost to the members 
or a million six. If this same tonnage was treated as trash at $85 a ton, for example, the cost would have been four million six, almost a $3 million savings by not landfilling or incinerating this valuable product, or almost $55 a ton differential. Now, not everybody's paying $85 a ton for MSW, municipal solid waste, but they shortly will be if the prognostications of the folks that know what's going on with trash are uh, even close to being correct. So this, this number is what we use just in terms of current numbers that are out there. But almost $3 million have been saved, but also the landfill capacity has been saved. Those tons have not been put in the landfill. In addition to that, the incinerators haven't had to shut down to take the slag off the bottom of their um, process where the glass is annealed onto the, the uh, equipment. This glass doesn't provide you with a whole lot of BTU value, pretty much none. How can I save $5,800 a year? NRA members produce 44 pounds per person of PGA for every year. For a town with a population of 4,800, just to pick a number, that's 211,000 pounds or 106 tons. 106 tons at 85 versus 106 tons at 30. And material is made to a usable product. Your savings is 5830 Simple math. The current host sites are located in Keene, in Littleton, and New London. We have one in Springfield, Vermont. We're hoping to open more in, in Vermont as well as in Massachusetts. And for each host site, they get the first 50 tons that they put in free. In New London's case, they, they put in a lot of glass, but their average cost was only $22 per ton because of the first 50 tons that they got as acting as the host site. And they got to reuse that material of their own, plus most of the material that was brought into New London from other folks. You can see here the yellow are the uh, sites around the host sites and they're, where they're bringing them to. Here's Littleton up here, New London right in the center part, and then Keene in the southwest corner and Wakefield over here. We're actively seeking out uh, folks down in the southern region down here, and we're also going to be taking in June um, visits to a couple of sites, hopefully, that we can develop in Massachusetts to help those towns with their current crisis. The challenges are obviously the usage. We need to convince more people to use more glass as a reuse product. If we could guarantee that more could be reused, we would have no trouble filling up this map back here and everything would be yellow because it would make way too much sense not to do it. But we have to have the outlets to take the glass too. We need more host sites, uh, certainly down in Massachusetts. They need to be close to the municipalities that have volume so we can cut down on transport costs and try to haul the material up to Canada or down to New Jersey. The solutions are many, but we like the, uh, the use of the reuse of the aggregate, the take back program in place, dropping off uncrushed material and picking up PGA crushed material to take back to the town, to reuse it in the town, backfill that retaining wall, uh, put it under the uh, sidewalk at 100% use. It uh, will help with the frost resistance for all perm all uh, uses, municipal projects. There's no permit or change in permit needed if used by the municipality in New Hampshire. For those of you in Mass, Vermont, and Maine, you need to check with your uh, departments of environmental protection or environmental services. This is an example that Richard had. It was a, a maintenance garage in New London, and this material was used as the slab, uh, poured slab uh, underneath that poured slab for the entire building. I think he used it as 100%. And you can see how well it compacted. If I heard right this morning, he only went over it twice, and the, and the glass just compacted perfectly. Used again under the uh, Quonset hut and the, the uh, slab here. Hasn't had a crack in the last three to five years that this has been operational. You can see it here and being used again, I believe at 100%, if I know Richard, along a uh, sidewalk after it's been compacted. And here's the loose material over here. You're going to cover this with tar, and this material will get covered eventually. You can see the, the side dressing after the sidewalk had been constructed here. There's going to be more bike path on this side, so that's why the side dressing is there. And you couldn't tell this is what, whether this was glass or aggregate all along the base, but this will not have any crack in it when they get done. I'm going to go back one. 
yep, this is a different pub sidewalk. So are there other solutions? Sure. And um, we're encouraging everyone to come up with a solution. And we, we don't take any pride of ownership at all other than to let's use more sand. Um, it could be landfill cover in some cases, uh, alternate daily cover. Uh, I think it's been approved in some states for that. The septic tank uh, leach field uh, project, we've, we're working with uh, Presby Environmental, see if that would work. We've talked to the Department of Transportation. Can you do a couple of pilot projects around your maintenance sheds for driveways? Or if your I-93 car runs out of gravel, could we throw some in there just so you can see how well it works? It's being considered as an amendment in what's called an eco-polymer plastic mat. The mats are so, mats are so rugged that they would um, handle backhoes or graders or bulldozers to go over them in rough terrain or wet spaces. Uh, and the glass can be used at about 25% to the plastic to uh, give it some additional strength. Carbon credits are available for using recycled materials and lead credits, of course, for all your construction projects. This shows you the after product. I think this is after a second go through of the crush, but it looks about the same consistency of what we saw this morning was just gone through once. It's a very fine um, product that's very easy to uh, to apply and then compacts even better. And again, you can see that the storage of the material is just like storing sand or, or uh, gravel up for a major project. It's totally inert, non-toxic, and it will not harm the environment. We like this one. This is a favorite of Bonnie's, I know, because here's the, the before and here's the after right afterwards. And this is screened at their 3 8 minus. We had a question today, too, is why did the glass coming in look so broken up? I think most of our folks that have been doing it for a while realize that if they take a backhoe to the open container with glass and pound it down a little bit, then they're going to be in good shape in terms of getting more into the, um, into the container. So it's a matter of compaction um, so they can haul more at one time, get a heavier load. So what we'd like to see is have that glass go back. You wouldn't see it under the, the flowers here necessarily, but any time that we get a chance to look at this one, we, we appreciate the fact that what we're trying to do is save the environment one ton of glass at a time. Permission to copy the training materials is available for reproduction by permission only. You can get that by contacting us at NR, our info at nra.net, and we would appreciate it if you would do that. We do have some PDFs on our website that you're welcome to copy and use. Um, but in terms of reusing the, the uh, presentation, we'd ask you not to do that. We appreciate your recycling. We appreciate the contribution of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And please remember to turn in uh, your evaluations online so that you can get your certificates. If you have any questions whatsoever on this webinar or how we've, we've laid it out, I would encourage you also to watch the eight minute video, and actually I may put a question on the evaluation sheet based on that. The video that we have on PGA Glass is right on the website. You don't need a password to get to it. But if you've gone through this webinar, you really need to finish up by looking at that video because the visual of that shows you pretty much how this use should go much, much better um, than anyone can portray just in an in audio uh, webinar, if you will. So again, go to the nrra.net, www.nrra.net website, review the um, eight minute video. There'll be one question at least in their evaluation sheet. There's also an additional webinar on the um, PDF on the front page as well, because this is such an important issue now. And I did not cover it earlier because it, of the way that we're pulling this out is mostly for drop-off facilities. But what we're seeing more and more is that the glass is contaminating single stream facilities, production of recycled material, causing them to have to uh, refuse to take glass in. Glass is going to get diverted into landfills. Landfills will run out of room, and then the cost of the landfills will go up. And we'll be hauling our trash out to Ohio. Um, and before you know it, that price will go through the roof. So it's very important that this idea take hold and that people understand this is just a strictly common sense way to deal with this absolutely safe, environmentally friendly reuse of material. Thank you all for recycling. That concludes this uh, PGA webinar. Again, any questions, contact us at www.nra.net or info at nra.net. Thank you very much.